Hello, this is Danpro, and I'm going to be doing another uh, Blender tutorial. And today I want to talk about uh, how to create and animate a spring. So I'm going to jump in here right away. Go to Front Orthographic View, Shift A to get my Add menu, and I'm going to add a curve, Bezier. And then I'm going to type 7 on my numpad to go to Top Down View. Um, I'm going to go to Edit Mode of that Bezier curve. Um, sh uh, scale Y 0 to straighten that curve out and I'm gonna make basically a box here I'm just gonna use this grid as my guide and place this approximately at this point and then spin this one around RZ negative 90 and then with that point selected I'm gonna do E to extrude add another point down here RZ negative 90 on that point and extrude one more time and we get three quarters of a box RZ negative 90 one more time now that doesn't look like a very good circle so we can fix that by selecting these points and scaling up these handles and I found that uh, about six lengths this way this is divided by ten um, four at the at the edges if I just scale that down slightly or just past half to about six box lengths there it's going to give me a really nice circle. So now that I've accomplished that, you can see we've got a pretty decent three-quarter circle. Now I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to select the three of these four points, and in front orthographic view, type G, Z, and drag this up. And what I'm trying to do is just put that point uh, about one of those box lengths up. Now I'm going to select the last two points. G, Z, repeat that, so this um, third one is two points up, or two box lengths, and select that last one again, and G, Z, drag this up about right there. Now, that's not giving me a, a really nice spiral yet, but I can uh, select this point here and uh, type R, Y, and start canting that a little bit, and let's do R Y to this other one uh, in the other direction, and now I can go to side view and repeat for these other points, typing R X. So we're now use the X direction, global X. So R X again, and I'm just basically trying to use my eye to point that right to about right there. So all right, back to front orthographic view. Now I've got a really nice gentle curve here. I'm going to select all my points, Shift D to duplicate, and then GZ. I'm going to drag them up. And once again, one, about one box length over the center point here. And what I want to do now is select um, this first point on that duplicate and the last point of the first um, section we made. And just type F and that will fill it. Once again, I'm going to select everything, Shift-D, G-Z, and fill the point. And front orthographic view one more time, Shift-D, G-Z. Now you can make your um, spring however long you want. I think I'm just going to stop about right here now, fill that. Alright, so now I've got a really nice, gentle spring-like um, curve, but it doesn't look like a spring, so the first thing I want to do, I think, is uh, since I used uh, the blender unit grid here, the spring is actually pretty huge, so I'm going to use my Shift-S cursor to center, and I'm going to add a scientific measuring tool, uh, the human metarig, and you can see that the spring is uh, massive, so <laughs> I'm going to scale this way down I think to get to about a size that um, it's a little bit more appropriate and I'm going to do scale shift Z just to bring this in and that looks about right I can deal with that and we can get rid of our measuring tool here and uh, now that I've um, sized that down I've actually got uh, scale values or unapplied scale values here and I want to apply those, so do Control A, oops, Control A, 
multiply scale and now I'm uh, zeroed out at a scale of 111 so perfect now if we go in here everything is uh, the way we want it but it still doesn't look like spring so we can go to our curve properties here and I'm at fill I'm gonna do full and then I'm gonna start dragging up this bevel depth until we get uh, a size that we we like or I like rather and I'm just gonna stop right there I'm gonna do period on my numpad so I could just spin around to that object and you can see that this uh, end piece here is really square in order to fix that we can just drag up a resolution if I just drag it up one um, it went from four sides to six sides and drag it up oops, one more time and then it goes to eight I think I'll just go up here to resolution of about eight and that seems decent to me and also if we uh, come down here and you see this U value if I drag that down to one you see I basically just got a square and every time I add or bump that up it subdivides it so I'm gonna go to about 16 I believe there and that looks pretty decent to me oh, so there we go we've got a, a spring in about uh, a few minutes <laughs> I don't know exactly how it probably took me longer to talk about it than to actually do it so um, <clears throat> so now what can we do with that spring well I don't want to do this again so I'm just going to duplicate it and move it to another layer and then we can start uh, adding um, new things to it I'm going to add a material to it let's just make this kind of a gray maybe this is like a spring on a car or something and bump up my specularity a little bit and also my hardness I'm just using uh, Blender Render but you could of course do this with uh, cycles if you wished and that looks decent to me but uh, how do we get this to animate or um, to rig it so we can have a working spring well, one make we can do is just add let me go to curve properties again scroll down to the bottom and find shape keys and oops, I'm gonna add one and you adds a basis like every other object every other mesh object would and I'll make two keys I'll do expand and compress so let's make let's drag our value slider up on expand and tab into edit mode I'm gonna select all these and I think I want my 3d cursor uh, as at my pivot point I'm gonna scale it in the Z axis uh, let's go and that seems about right right there so there we go we've got a shape key to expand and contract our um, our curve or our spring and we could actually make another one for to drag it all the way down but let's just do the compress right now make sure our other one is zeroed out so drag up compress tab in edit mode I'm gonna look at top down view and I'm gonna do scale and then I'm shift Z so it doesn't scale on the Z axis and I'm just going to drag this in a little bit I'll go back to front orthographic view and you can see that I can get a compression so basically as you expand up you would want to add a little of this compression to uh, shrink that a little bit and so that is definitely one way we can do it but let's make another duplicate here shift D to duplicate let's move this to another layer and let's actually do this with an armature now <coughs> okay I've got my cursors at the center shift A add armature single bone and I always add like to turn on axis display and also x-ray it's in object mode right now I'm going to tab into edit mode and it always has that first bone selected at the tip I'm going to have that to select the tip GZ drag this way down to about the size of our uh, spring and um, I think what I want to do is I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to animate a spring and that's with the stretch to constraint so I'm going to add a couple more bones here I'm extrude on the Z axis straight up and also extrude on the Y axis so this bone will be 
Up to position. The central bone will be MCH stretch. And this will be our control bone. Control stretch. I want a parent uh, control bone to our position with offset and also um, our mechanical stretch bone also to the position bone with keep offset. If I go into um, pose mode you can see that my position is going to change the um, position of all these bones. I can rotate it or scale it or whatever I need to do and, and this will be our control for our stretch but let's set that that stretch constraint up by selecting the control bone and then shift select the MCH MCH stretch bone I can do control shift C and stretch to and that um, if you go to our bone constraints here that basically added our armature control stretch is our target bone and if we, we can just see that that is working perfectly well and we can rotate or grab our position bones and do whatever we want. Oh, I've got uh, a 3D cursor around here, so I can just do median point or individual elements. And there we go. Now let's just attach the, the spring to it. And that's going to be very easy. We're going to use a hook modifier. So to, in order to do that, we want to detach the spring to our stretch bone. So I'm going to select the stretch bone. Now I'm going to shift select our curve. Tab into edit mode and I was I should have moved us back to basis here so it um, wasn't expanded out that's what uh, was causing that little malfunction there but with all these points selected I'm going to do control H hook to selected object bone and what that did was added a modifier on our a hook modifier on our curve to that stretch bone and now I've got a stretchy spring but you can see that it's really squishing and and uh, losing a lot of volume when we go up and if you want that that's perfectly fine um, I don't think I do in my case so let me go to back to my constraint my stretch to constraint and I'm gonna put a volume of none and you can see that now when I stretch that out um, it's not, uh, there's no volume loss, so <clears throat> anyways, I actually do want a little bit of volume in that, though, when I stretch up, so I'm going to, with the control selected, G, Y, Y, for its local axis, let's drag this up here, looks like about 0.5, looks good, so when I get up to 0.5, I want to, I've already got that, um, shape key, our compressed shape key on here. I want to add a little compression here. I'm trying to figure out what's going to look good. Maybe 0.5. All right, yeah. Let's go with that. So when the local, when we drag the local y-axis up to 0.5 units, I want to apply a. Uh, the compress and we'll just add a driver to this so with compress selected add driver and I like to have a default driver panel here that I can quickly access so I'm going to use this def plus on the default I call this drivers that way I can split a window here and I don't have to keep doing this as I'm working uh, let's see we've got our key compress value I want our end panel out for our driver panel. You can see our, we've got our free keyframes that get added with our driver. I'm just going to hit uh, full stop on the numpad to uh, zoom in here. Alright, so these free keyframes we've got, we can actually use those to make our driver work properly. So at key f let's set up our variable first. Uh, I'm going to use average value for instead of scripted expressions, just average value. And then we need transform channel of our armature, and the bone will be our control stretch bone. 
and we want its um, y location in its local y location. All right, so you can see that updated. All right, it when it's when its location is zero, or we want that the value of our um, compress shape key to be zero. So that's fine with this first keyframe. Let's change this second one though. Um, when we want when y location is 0.5, we want the compress shape key value to be also 0.5. So that was actually pretty easy there. We'll just type those in, update it, and now you can see that's auto applying that that compression as we lift this up and actually we'll go back to our default driver so we can see the results and we can actually hide that stretch bone so we don't have to see that uh, behind our spring and there we go um, very simple way to um, control a spring as long as we only want to stretch it in and out if we wanted to add a curve to it that of course is going to be a little bit more complicated and I've actually got uh, another file here and this is an, a complete rig but um, I won't be going through this and in, in this tutorial I just want to show you real quick I've basically got it's a lot more complex so um, in order to get this curvy functionality to it so um, there's a lot going on here I've actually have uh, two armatures working together. I've got a spline and uh, a spline IK and also a, a control um, rig to move that spline IK. So turn this on, on here. And uh, like I said, this will be for another tutorial. This is uh, takes quite a bit longer to set up but if you're interested in that um, look for part two and I hope you have fun with springs and um, and I hope this is helpful to you good luck everybody